Good day, Douglas County Young Adult Stakeholders, and welcome to our first virtual citizen engagement to inform the Douglas County Strategic Plan. Today's host is Ms. Tabria Cobbs, who is a member of our Douglas Forward 2025 project team. A few simple requests for today's activity. One, we ask that you please keep your videos on during the entire meeting. Two, to keep your microphones on mute. And three, we will instruct you to remove the mute function when it's your turn to share uh, your perspectives on what are the most important things that the county government should be working on over the next five years. Now you might ask, how can you share your feedback? Let's go over three ways that we expect feedback to be shared by the community during the life of this project. At any time, you can go online at www.celebratedouglascounty.com forward slash strategic planning feedback. When you arrive at, that, arrive at that location, you'll see our online form. Uh, we're asking for a little bit of information about you. You fill in the information, the survey, and it will go right to our project team mailbox. Secondly, you can send us an email directly to the project team at douglasforward2025 at co.douglas.ga.us. And then today, you're going to participate in our virtual meeting and share directly with the project team. These are the three main ways in which we're going to receive feedback from the community over the next several months. We look forward to hearing from you this afternoon. Please be patient with us as we prepare to start our meeting. Hello, everyone. Oh, yeah, you're muted. So I truly hope you understand how much um, I appreciate you for joining the meeting. As you all know, um, this is the street, uh, this is our strategic planning project for Douglas County, and it's called Douglas Ford 2025. And like Mr. Lionel mentioned, this initiative is just focusing on engaging in conversation about the needs and expectations of our county. Um, as you all know, I asked you to outline the most important topics or matters and to be prepared to list them during this meeting today. Um, for example, a response could be, I would like to see an increase in public safety in my district or my community, or I would like our public health options to improve countywide. And what we collect today will contribute to the creation of our five-year strategic plan. So um, I have an order that I see from you all. I see Nicholas is first. So we could get started with Mr. Nicholas. That would be perfect. All right, I will uh, I'll be happy to start. Thank you. Um, let, let me just pull it up real quick. Mm-hmm. Thank you again, Nicholas, for coming. Hope all is well. Um, yeah, everything uh, has been well, and I'm happy to be here. Um, okay, so one of the uh, one of the things that I um, that I wait. Um, can you guys hear me? My my computer's mm -hmm. getting messages. Okay, okay. Um, so um, one of the things that I thought of is. Um, um, well, mo most importantly, um, really dealing with the increasing road traffic um, in the past few years, definitely, but really all over my lifetime, I've been noticing that um, traffic and roads around Douglas County, even small like um, county roads are getting, um, are getting more and more packed with cars and there are more traffic jams and all of that delays. So um, that's definitely one thing. Um, Number two, um, maybe 
maybe less, um, maybe less visible right now, but uh, I think as we, um, as we as kids um, go to um, eventually um, grow and leave our, leave our, um, leave our, leave our homes, um, we're going to be searching for housing on our own. And we may not have, you know, um, high paying jobs right when we, um, right when we start searching for a home or searching for renting a home. So maybe um, ensuring that there is low cost housing. I'm not sure exactly where the county stands on that right now. Um, I just thought of that to throw that out, but um, yeah, that's one. Um, a third one is, uh, let me see, um, definitely creating more job opportunities that too. Um, I, I do think that the county is actually doing very, very well in that. Um, pretty much, there's pretty much job openings everywhere. Um, everywhere I see at all businesses, at a bunch of government uh, places, but just making sure that's sustained into the future too would, would also be really good. Um, <clears throat> so a fourth thing is, and I'm, I'm not exactly sure about, uh, Never mind, but I'll, I'll just say it anyway, maybe more development in the west and south parts of the county because I have, uh, I did think about it and most of, you know, the buildings and everything in Douglasville are kind of around the I-20 corridor and on the east side of Douglas County as you get more into Metro Atlanta. Um, and uh, out here where I live in the west side and the south side, I mean, Pretty much the only the only building that I have in my town is a gas station. So, I mean, kind of a little bit economically um, economically not a lot around here. So, um, yeah. Um, and the fifth thing is, and this is something that that um, that the county is doing great at. And I know because um, because I've taken part in it is increasing student involvement in government, like dear, like through the youth commission and um, and inviting them to come to a county commissioner meetings. Because um, this being able to be with the government and learn about the government and see how it works and um, everything that the youth commission is doing and uh, did when I was with them, um, it. It, it, it's really, it's really opened my mind to the possibilities of, you know, I, I really do love learning about the government and um, being able to work with, with all of you guys and do things like this. And yeah, um, if, if we increase student involvement in government, it will not only, um, I didn't think that through, I'm sorry, but it's, it's definitely a good thing for any kid to be able to do to learn how their government works and learn exactly um, how far it reaches. And um, yeah, if, if there are more of those, even just in the next five years, I'm sure it'll make a huge impact. So that's all that I have. Um, thank you, thank you for the time. Thank you. Um, I guess I wanna clarify uh, number two what what did you I remember you said something about less visible and then you kind of my my service went bad. Did you hear me? Sorry, I muted myself again. Um. So, um. Yeah. I, I, I think number two, I, I was talking about low cost housing, um, just, mm -hmm. you know, as, as we as youth um, grow older, we, it, it would, it would, you know, help us a lot to make sure that there is low cost um, affordable housing if, you know, we don't have high paying jobs, if we're, you know, working, working in fast food or department stores or anything like that. Um, that would definitely but wanted to move back people. home. Yeah. Okay. Understood. Well, thank you so much, Nicholas. And we are going to move.
forward, um, Asimis Zaria. Hi, everyone. My name is Zaria. Um, some things that I've written down were involving around um, the money. So I guess minimum wage has declined. And I was just wondering like what we could do to get that, I guess, raised a little bit. I don't know like the policies or protocols that would take to get there, but that's something that I had in mind. Also I had in mind was homelessness in Douglas County has increased. I don't know how right now we could handle that but um, I think it's something that the county should definitely take into consideration and like how they could do their part in making sure that that number does decrease and we find at least homeless shelters for these people to go to because it's families. It's not just grown people like these are children out here. They have nowhere to go. They have no food. So I think that's something that the county should focus on a little bit more. Thank you so much, ma'am. I hope all is well with you in college life. I'm not going to go into that. <laughs> Next, I see Miss Nicole Paul. Okay, sorry, you wouldn't let me mute myself. But um, hi guys, um, nice to see you, Ms. Debria. Um, so I would just say that um, I haven't really been in Douglasville for a few months since I've been in school, but like when I do go home, just still seeing the same amount of sidewalks that were still there. Not like I've been gone forever, but you know, just going as I roll past my school, just seeing still no sidewalks. Um, and Chapel Hill Road is a very busy road, um, especially down by Publix and um, Kroger and everything. So just probably seeing more sidewalks. Um, more things for young adults to do would be another something that I think we should really look into. I know that when I come home, it's not, it's like I'm just sitting at home. There's not a lot for us to do. And I know it's COVID, but it could be something now that we're starting to look forward to and starting to manipulate so that when COVID is over, we can really start with getting something in place. Um, also, maybe more updated apartments. Um, like I said, um, with young adults coming back home from college, we really only just have the apartments by um, the mall area, I forgot what they call students one of those um but yeah i know that those are our main apartments in douglasville but just to see maybe a newer fresher vibe to the apartment life especially if we want to come home and not live under our parents roof still things of that nature um i know one of the previous nicholas he had mentioned um that more kids were getting involved in government, but maybe we could try having the courthouse, somebody from the courthouse, whether it be voting, um, the commissioner's office, the uh, probate office, anything, go to maybe partnering with the SGAs in the different high schools so that with student government, you're doing for your community, you're doing with your um, constituents, which is the students in the school. So maybe getting some feedback on how to be better or um, what maybe getting into a stepping stone or a foot into the door into politics. And then um, maybe more connections with the city. I know we have a bus route that goes to like um, Six Flags would connect Douglas, but maybe just getting a little further in there. Um, I don't know what it would be, maybe like a restaurant that's downtown 
but we bring like a smaller version to Douglas Square because I know it has a lot to do with um, the roofs and the equations and all of that um, to see if we actually have enough people to equate with that business. But yeah, those are my suggestions. And I guess with a little time, I'll be able to come up with some more and in, in, in elaborate. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was those were great responses. Uh, we've heard a lot of great responses. Um, next, I'm going to go with Jaden. All right. Hey, thanks for having me. Uh, I have a couple of things that I just wrote down to kind of help our um, counties. The first thing it's been like from being in, you know, youth commission, I've learned more about it, but I feel as it should have been spoken about before I even got here and more prominent in society. And that's dealing with our public transportation in Douglasville. Um, just having a campaign where we let individuals know that that is available, um, whether that's through passing out flyers, going to different churches, letting um, different, you know, organization leaders know that, hey, we have this opportunity for people to get to different places where they need to do. So just, you know, making public transportation and individuals in Douglas County more informed about that. Another thing, a couple of things I have about um, youth in Douglas County is um, we always have youth commission and learning more about the government. And these skills, sometimes it takes practice to get better. So just giving students the opportunity by creating more internships and public jobs for high school students and letting them know that, hey, this is available for you. You can come do this, you can learn, you get your foot in the water before you just hearing a whole bunch of talk about what you can do and what the government does do, but you can actually do it yourself and learn it, whether that's paid Paid or not. Um, also, one thing that's very prominent as th this past year, I worked as a poll worker. And I was thinking, what if we had an opportunity where instead of always telling high school students who are eligible to vote, to go vote on this specific day, telling them to vote, like during one of the early voting days, which are two weeks in October, two weeks in June, or whenever one of the primaries are, having a bus at the school excuse the students from school, because they would do that. They Kids will leave school to go vote if you give them the opportunity as an idea and having buses from each of the high schools to take or even having a setup during the school day where individuals can go and vote during like class change or during like the lunch period to give people a better opportunity to be, you know, to vote and have their voices heard. Uh, my fourth thing is dealing with, you know, the mental state. And that's really something that a lot of people have been going through throughout this COVID area and being at home by yourself is instead of always treating someone in high school or in middle school or even elementary school for that instance, who may have problems, social anxiety, you know, may have bad behavior, instead of always coming with them with discipline, we should need to recognize that these students need therapy. These students do need people that can who they can speak to about specific things. So maybe hiring a couple, you know, therapists in the schools to kind of like talk to people and kind of get them on their right track when they just need someone really there for them who is basically trained and certified in dealing with certain problems. Um, we also need, you know, more access to jobs in our community, not only with high schoolers, but as our community as a whole. So instead of just holding job fairs to high schoolers to get out, have larger scale job fairs at like the conference center or something and let the community you know, go to churches, put out memos, hey, we're having this job fair here this day about jobs in the community. And while we're at that job fair, instead of just telling them, hey, this job is available, have individuals there, volunteers who will help people learn how to make a resume, let people know that, hey, this is what you do to apply to a job if they need the clothing, letting them know that here's locations for you to go get clothes donations. If you need food right now while you're trying to get a job, you can go and get this. So just having resources there so they can stay on their foot while they're looking for a job and have the necessary things to get a job. Um, another thing that I would say is um, this past year, we learned a lot about 
social justice and injustice, um, increase the relationship between law enforcement and students. We already have the um, SROs at the schools, but they shouldn't be the only ones who are at the schools who getting relationships with the students because the majority of the time, the people who is gonna stop a student for having a busted tail light aren't going to be the SRO. It's going to be a law enforcement for the Douglasville Police Department or the Sheriff's Office. So just getting them more engaged in the school, having them at school events, activities, kind of learning students on a one-on-one -on -one basis that can really help so that not only will police not be afraid of a student, unfortunately not because of the color of their skin, but also have, you know, the students not be afraid of a police department because they know the person, they know that the person has their best interests with them. Um, and then I know I've been saying a lot, but my uh, last thing is, you know, government involvement with our elected officials. We need them to be a little bit more visible in, you know, our school life in high school. You know, we should see the mayor walk down our school hallways, come sit in the classroom, see what you're learning about, you know, maybe have the sheriff come around one day. Just elected officials kind of have the opportunity to meet students, come to a football game. Let's say Alexander Douglas County playing a football game, have the elected officials there, make sure that they are talking to students, saying, hey, what do you need? How are you liking this? Like asking them questions and just getting that, you know, ground in that relationship to better for the, our community. Um, I know I talked a lot, but that's just a couple of things I thought of on the top of my head. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, okay, next I will go with, um, oh, okay, something happened. Miss Kaylin. Okay, so my first issue was regarding the environment and regarding the youth, sorry. Um, I think that the youth should be more involved and they should have more of an education um, regarding the environment and not just the, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, and not just the traditional education. So I know in many um, countries abroad, they have where um, every student has to plant a tree. And so, that can, um, that can just get the, the youth more involved regarding the environment. And um, the second thing that I have was a mentorship, but for teens to be the mentors um, from teen to maybe someone of an, in middle school or of an elementary age or tutoring, and also to have the, um, the county to be more connected to others um, across the globe and not just within the county or within the state. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Kalen. Right, Ms. Michelle. Hi, so I have um, four, five things. So first I want to talk about, um, I'm a member in my school of Keep Douglasville, Keep Douglas County Beautiful a sector under mystery is by Dante Christian and the past few months and Caitlin's also me a member. Um, we've been talking about how we want to see more sidewalks like Nicole said, um, because I live in the Chapel Hill region too and there's definitely not many sidewalks by like Chapel Hill Middle School. The most I really see is Chapel Hill Elementary but in the main busy areas there aren't really any. And when I was in school back in person, I would walk after school every day to like downtown Douglasville or the local library. And there are definitely no sidewalks over there. So I'd feel like it's very dangerous, honestly, especially because I'm a girl walking along. Um, and I was hoping, we, well, as a club, we we're hoping to bring um, trash cans as well at, with the sidewalks in those areas just around Douglasville, especially by Douglas County High School into um, the Douglas uh, County Library area and to Douglas, downtown Douglasville. The second part was, um, I was hoping we could emphasize like the fine arts to the county because I feel like we know more about sports within the county with high schools and stuff, but I never hear anything about art competitions or whatsoever, maybe having those uh, opportunities available as well as like other youth activities, like I've heard previous people say, 
like the other day I found out that we have a skate park and I didn't know that and I've lived here basically all of my life just making it just teenagers and just children aware that there are these places you could be at you don't have to stay at home all day um and lastly um Jaden and I are club members of Becca's Closet in which it is a club where we give dresses to girls in need for like dances prom and I feel like it's not really known to the community that much. We started doing it our sophomore year and because of COVID, we had to stop. So we were thinking before the peak pandemic happened to see if like we could have a male version of that. So we could have for go both girls and boys to have um, suits, dresses, accessories, et cetera, so that they can have the best prom experience they want because I know it's cost a lot of money. I feel like everyone deserves to experience that time of their life. So that's what I thought. Thank you so much, Miss Michelle. Um, next, Miss Kendall. Okay. Um, hi. So I really have um, like one main idea, which is parks and not necessarily like how they look but the activities that are offered I think there should be more like maybe more open space for like people to just go and be together or a place maybe you can have picnics or something uh basketball courts more soccer fields like basically more open area for people to do whatever um like walk your dogs for kids playgrounds areas for just families to go and hang out because um i don't think that we have a lot of just space for people to go and be together outside and um that's really my main idea i had okay thank you thank you miss kendall all right, and I believe last, yes, yeah, last we will have Miss Samari. Okay, good evening, everyone. Salutations. Um, okay, I'm trying to think of like, well, okay. Okay, so I was the only thing I have so far is because well I know I know everybody's like kind of spreading the word upon mass, you know, social distancing, be six feet apart. So um we're using that in a way, let's say let's make, you know, like have a little like use as I'm sorry, I'm trying to make sense here. I'm I'm nervous because I'm like, oh my gosh, every, everybody has it's such so a good, good. idea. <laughs> and I'm here like what to say or because okay, if I'm gonna do it, you can do it. Okay, so um I believe since starting of last year during COVID-19, 2020, I, my mom and I started making crafting jewelry to spread the word about masking. I know everybody else has their different way, like making their own masks and giving it to people or making blankets or books or open up and be like, wear a mask, next page, on the mask, next page, rock with the mask, next page or something like that. So now we're taking it to where we put on jewelry we're making jewelry. This is handmade, homemade jewelry, and we're literally using bracelets. And then passing it on as as everybody, because even though this COVID, I don't know, I don't even know what's going on. It's going down, it's going back up. Either way, we just want to spread the word about COVID and just letting you know that this ain't a no joke. This ain't no, oh, we're sick kind of thing. This is serious. So that's what I was thinking. Just it, because we're going to probably like make a website and then launch it probably by this April, maybe I have no, I have no clue. So that's why I was, that's what we've been thinking, just spreading the word about this coronavirus. Okay. And then another thing is I was thinking of encouragement. Like when I mean encouragement, I mean like, cause you know, we all are losing a lot of hope here and thinking, Oh, when's this thing going to end? Where are we going to be able to be with everybody again? So I was thinking like, make like you know powerpoints i don't mean just regular powerpoints but like make make like make some type of video or some type of or, or at least a TikTok dance like yeah have hope yeah yeah or something i don't know <laughs> i don't know but like something like that and that's it thank you samari so thank you <laughs> samari <laughs> do the dance again <laughs> how are you i just had to say hello
Okay, well, um, I think we got a lot of great responses. Um, I'm going to let Mr. Lionel introduce himself now and kind of give an overview of how we'll kind of use this feedback and create the five-year plan. Well, good afternoon, young people. I'm excited to speak with you today. Uh, thank you to Bria for putting together an excellent uh, group of young people to come and, and give us your heart today. And so um, you guys did excellent. And, and so what we want to do with this is to encourage you to get more people to give us you know, feedback. And uh, some of you came in a little bit late after we were running the video. Uh, that we ran to give you the instructions on how to engage with us. So I wanna go over those really quickly per adventure you didn't hear it. And so one is to go to the county website uh, and fill out the form directly. Um, and then that form will go right to our project team. And so maybe some of you have done it already and that thank you very much. Um, and then secondly, you can send us an email directly um, and that will be, uh, very, you know, that'll be good for us. Um, and so we'll, we'll take it that way. And then how you just contributed right now by being in a virtual meeting with us. Now we're, we're hoping to meet with uh, lots of people in a virtual meeting setting, but we know the biggest way that we're gonna get feedback from the citizens are the first two, um, I, you know, opportunities for people to go directly to our county website and fill in that form, which will take five minutes, click submit and we're good or sending us an email directly. And so what we're gonna to have to Bria uh, do with you as a follow-up, we're gonna send you guys an email with a couple of these things in the email. And what we're gonna ask you to do is just send it out to anybody that you know. Um, and you can use all the tools available to you. You can use your own social media to do this. You can use old fashioned email that most of you guys don't use that much anymore. But however you communicate with your network of friends, um, we would ask that you do that uh, because you will be able to motivate your friends to do this. Uh, the only thing I want to make sure is that, that you send it to people who are residents of Douglas County uh, because those are the individuals that, that we're focused on to get this feedback. And so um, if you have other ideas, and you said, man, I gave these guys six or seven ideas and you have other ideas, submit us another form. It's okay, submit us another form, uh, still fill it out you know, with your name because we'll match it up later. And if you got six or seven more ideas, we'll take them. You know, what we're trying to do is get as many ideas as possible and then we're gonna nail, you know, bring all those ideas together and they're gonna feed into probably five, four or five, maybe six at the most of big objectives. And so I wanna give you guys an example of one thing that was just mentioned. I'll use Samari. So Samari was a little nervous, but you know what I heard from Samari? What, what she really was talking about? She was talking about, hey, mental health is an issue. Now, a couple of you guys brought it out specifically, but what Samari was really saying is, hey, this COVID thing is real. I don't know when it's gonna be over. There's a little bit of anxiety. And so what that informs our project team is, even though it's a 2020 or a 2021 issue, what we need to be looking at long-term is maybe there's something around mental health, public health that we need to be concerned with. And so you may not give us the exact objective that you're gonna see six or seven months from now in a, in a fancy document that we'll produce, but it's these statements that you're making, it's our job to take those statements and then put them into four or five big buckets. A couple of you guys said some things about, you know, recreation activities. A few people talked about sidewalks. Well, we know how to then take those statements and put it into a much larger bucket that we'll be able to communicate back to the citizens. So your answers were all great. You're the first set of citizens that we've talked with it will give us great instruction on how to um, perfect our meetings uh, going forward. And this is a right about the timeline that we have suggested that it would take. Tabria did an excellent job. This is exactly what we want to do. We want to get you know, 10, 15 citizens on a video call, literally go one by one. And when we finish, we'll say good night. We'll see you next time. 
and we'll communicate with you down the road. So you guys did excellent. I am very pleased with this, with this uh, activity today. We have a big one on Thursday with the grown folks. <laughs> and so you guys really help us um, get ready for that. And I hope that they're gonna do as good as you guys have. You, you came prepared. That's one of the things that Tabria asked you to do, come prepared, uh, because that's gonna be important. It's okay to be nervous, but if you can look at your list and read it off, it's all good. And that's what we're gonna ask other citizens to do. So thank you very much. It's a pleasure speaking with you. And when I'm in Douglas County, I'm gonna to come to one of these meetings because I just love young people. And I'm excited about what you guys have shared. Um, thank you, Lionel. So I just wanted to say too, you guys did an amazing job with your ideas. And um, you know, one, one of the things that we want you guys to do is be true ambassadors for the strategic plan. Tabria and I discussed, you know, because of COVID, we haven't been able to do our normal projects. We did our we did the Black History Month program, but we would like to be able to have use you guys as ambassadors. So please make sure to just let your friends and family members know, your schoolmates know that live in Douglas County that it, it doesn't take very long to please fill out the form and give us the information because this, this document is gonna be a guide for our, for our commissioners to just really determine you know, how they're gonna govern and how they're, what they're gonna be looking at and what the citizens really want to hear. So I really appreciate all of you, especially those who, who are in college right now who came back and our youth commissioner alumni, alumni who are still in high school, but are also participating. And of course, our current students who are in the youth commission program, you guys, we just did a whole program and you stayed extra to do this. So I am, I'm in awe of your commitment to the program and to Douglas County. And um, I just wanted to say that, and um, Tabria, you did an excellent job. I'm gonna turn it back over to you. And um, I thank you guys so much. And it's so good to see all of you. All righty, well, um, I will make sure that I send out um, the information to you all and get the information from you all to give back to me and the team. So um, if you have any questions for me for today or tomorrow, just email me tonight. And um, I believe that's it. Um, Smino, if there's anything else, I believe that's it. That's all. Oh, well, that's it. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, students. Bye. Have a great day. Have a great night. Excuse me. Sorry. Great night. Bye-bye. <laughs>